Welcome back. Today we'll talk about a case where if you have low myopia under minus two diopters, so minus 1.5, minus 1.75 maybe at the most, but you never started wearing glasses. Uh, how do you fix your myopia if you've now found this resource and you decide you want to get back to 2020, you want to get rid of the low myopia, never wearing glasses didn't make your myopia worse, it didn't become lens induced, but it also didn't improve your eyesight. So what do you do? And uh, more detail on this in a blog post link below where I answer this question, probably more detail than this video. So read that as well. First problem you have is blur adaptation, meaning that your distance vision is somewhat blurred and you've simply become used to it. So you're not expecting a clear image at any distance beyond regular close-up. And the key thing that improves your eyesight is not eye exercises, is not simply not wearing glasses, but it's stimulus. And the stimulus in particular you're looking for that hopefully you're already familiar with. If this is the first video you're watching, you need to learn a lot more about this stuff. This video by itself won't be enough for the answer, but it's the piece for the low myopia blur adaptation. So the stimulus is what you need, right? Like you need that active focus where you're looking at distant writing, you're looking at a license plate, you're looking at a street sign, and it's slightly blurry, and you blink, and it clears up. Just that, that line of effort where something is blurry because you're not making an effort to see clearly. That little bit of a gap, the active focus is what improves your eyesight. And not only does active focus improve your eyesight, distance active focus in particular. So you never having worn glasses is a good thing because you didn't get lens-induced myopia, you weren't wearing your glasses for close-up, which creates the hyperopic to focus, which is the primary driver for the axial elongation. Does my face look green? That, that creates the lens-induced myopia. So you avoided that and your close-up habit in that respect, not using glasses is okay, but you don't get the active focus. And the active focus is air conditioning just turned on. I don't know if that's going to be noisy, we'll just leave it. Uh, the active focus is what actually improves your eyesight. So what you need to do is get rid of the blur adaptation. And the way you get rid of the blur adaptation is by some lens use. And this is really tricky because the balance there needs to be you want to get your visual cortex back to a state where it expects clear vision, but you don't want to get used to glasses. You don't want to start getting lens-induced myopia. You don't want to start wearing those glasses and taking them off and things look way blurrier than they did before. That is the significant risk factor. And since you avoided glasses all this time, you don't want to now fall into that trap. So the ideal way to do this is one, to not wear full correction. If you've never worn glasses, of course, if you're driving, whatever legal things, do the right thing. But if you've never worn glasses and you say you have a minus 1.75, get an eye chart, get a friendly optometrist, or get a test lens kit, or whatever you need to do, figure out like 2030, 2040, on average, is a good amount of correction, right? So maybe you get a minus one diopter, a minus 1.25, just to increase the, the diopter bubble, the distance to which you can see clearly. And you don't just start wearing these glasses, right? Like you want to basically supplement the most challenging conditions that you're currently just dealing with without glasses, um, which would be moving at speed, right? That's always one. It's, it's a totally different thing, statically seeing clearly and seeing clearly when things are moving rapidly. The second uh, situation where you may need more correction is nighttime, right? If the, there's not sufficient lighting, any kind of focal plane error is going to become much more pronounced when there's less light. So what I would do in a case like this, I would get um, an under correction, right? Like say you're just under minus two, so I would get maybe a minus 1.25 and start wearing this only in the evening, right? Like wear it at the movie theater, wear it when you're taking a nighttime walk outside, where you now get clear vision, where not previously you were used to much, much more blur, you get now a clear image and you use that for active focus. You don't just passively walk around enjoying clear vision. 
you're undercorrected, right? So the, the blur is not completely gone. But now you have the opportunity for active focus. You have the opportunity, you're walking around, ideally a city, a city's perfect at night. You have a bunch of lit up signs, you have a bunch of writing, and you start working on where's my blur horizon and working on active focus. You don't wear the glasses during the day, right? Like you haven't been wearing them during the day, you've been getting away with it fine. The only thing you want the glasses to do is reset your visual cortex to expect a clear image. Now what should happen, you practice this for a few weeks, you only do it in the evening, like you're only doing it in adverse lighting conditions. You also take the same walk during the day. The same is ideal, like if you have like a particular part of town that you take a walk in at night, where you're practicing active focus, do the same walk during the day. Good lighting, don't wear those glasses, you should start to, over a matter of a few days or weeks at most, notice a change where instead of street signs and written text being more or less in a standard sort of blur, you should start seeing shifting vision. The blur should clear up to some degree, you should get some double vision. Double vision is the interim step between blur and clear vision where you're using active focus and that image begins to clear up because you re-engage your visual cortex, you reset the expectation towards a clear image. This is one example. There's lots of ways to, to tackle the, this whole issue of low myopia and blur adaptation, but this is a simple one. This is one that most people can use. The key ingredients are you're on the correct, right? 20, 30, 20, 40 is plenty because you need a blur horizon. You can't just have everything be sharp and you use it in adverse lighting conditions because what happens here is when it's dark, it was a lot more blurry than when there's perfect lighting outside during the day, right? So in the dark, you're adding just enough to compensate, to give you a little bit of blur horizon. You're not messing with the daytime situation because when you add minus lenses to your daytime situation, now you're going to introduce more perceived blur because now your brain goes, when you take off those glasses, wow, this is really blurry. And if you're at minus 1.5 or minus 1.75, that may be a big jump that you possibly can avoid by never even touching that, right? You don't even know what the clear image during the day looks like. You don't need to because all you need is the reference that you're using at night and during the day you're just going without glasses. And as long as you're getting a change, right? Like you're doing active focus, you figured out, sorry, you figured out active focus up close first before you get into all this because this is kind of an advanced video topic. You figured out a close up active focus, you're when you're working in front of your screen, you're, you're moving your head back, uh, the text gets a bit blurry, you blink, the text clears up, fine, perfect, you got active focus, now you get the undercorrected lenses, you use them at night, you practice the same active focus with written text distance at night, you know, street signs, car license plates, ads, shop signs, all that stuff, and you take the same walk during the day without glasses. You should start noticing, especially if you get little bits of double vision instead of just straight blur, that your eyesight is improving. If that's the case, you're on the right track, and it's a good starting point. And uh, more on this is available in Back to 2020. I get a ton of email whenever I post a new one of these videos, and, and it might be worth pointing out that this is strictly DIY. I'm happy to give pointers when I get a question that comes up consistently, that's, a, that's something that may affect a lot of people, but I don't offer case-specific individual advice. Right? Because I get thousands of emails, I'm really not going to sit there all day and be free support monkey for everybody who wants to have specific advice, which you can absolutely figure out with the blog. I've spent thousands of hours building the blog. There's how-to guides, there's diopter discussion, there's detailed improvement reports from people that also give you insight in what people did and how they did it. So all the tools are there. Don't ask me for case-specific advice. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.